so let's now start looking at how to find uh, distributions of functions of two random variables. I've described this a little bit before. Uh, I want to tie up that with the contour visualization that I did in the previous lecture. So here's the general idea. Let's begin with the general idea and then we'll apply it in a few cases to illustrate how it works. Okay. Uh, so you have two random variables. There is a joint PMF that's given to you and you have a function g of x, y. How do you find the PMF of uh, x, y? There are two steps. Always there are two steps. Focus on these two steps and go in step one, step two. Okay, it will always help you. First is find the range of z's. Find the set of all possible values that z can take. Okay, so you just have to go through every possible x and y and imagine what g of x, y is. That will give you the range of z. Second step is to add over the contours. Okay, so notice what I'm saying here. Suppose small z is a possible value taken by z. Okay. So, the contours that you add over are g of x, y equal to small z. Okay. So, this is the contour over which I am adding. You sum over all the possible x, y. Remember, x and y will have to belong to your joint PMF, you know, the values that it takes such that g of x, y is equal to z. So, if you have a good picture of g of x, y equal to z, z, you can simply add up over all those possibilities, the PMF that you have and you will get the distribution. Okay, so once again there are two steps. First step, figure out the range of values taken by z. Second step, figure out the contours for every value that z takes and simply add up over the contours what joint PMF you have, that will be the answer. Okay, so let me illustrate this with a couple of very simple examples. Here is a pair of dice. Okay, uh, uniform 1 to 6, z is x plus y. First step is the range. Okay, range is easy enough in this. 1 to 6 if you add it can go from 1 plus 1 which is 2 all the way to 6 plus 6 which is 12 and uh, you know it's just a sequence after that 2, 3, 4, 5 all the way to 12. Okay. Now how do we do contours? That's what's uh, the most uh, interesting part. So let me just illustrate to you by drawing a picture here. The picture may not be the greatest one but I think it's, it's useful. First thing you do is to picture the joint PMF on the x, y axis. So, remember the joint PMF I know is already like you know 1 to 6. So, you have x, y here. Picture the joint PMF. How do I picture the joint PMF? I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and here I have 1, 2, 3, oh my god, not going to work, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so let's say we do this and the joint PMF is non-zero in all these points. So, so I am not going to show the value of the joint PMF. I am simply going to put an x wherever the no joint PMF is non-zero. x is a location where f, x, y, uh, maybe I should do instead of x, I should, maybe I should put a star. Right? So, so that it distinguishes between x and this. So, the star I put in a location where f x y is not equal to 0. So, that star is a point that x and y can take together. Okay, So, x and y can fall at that point. So, that is what it means. So, now I have to do a star in every place. There are six, 36 such stars. I will just put a dot dot dot. You can imagine. Uh, maybe I will I'll add one more and then I will I'll put dot dot dots. Uh, maybe you know if I have time, I will keep putting these stars. I do not know. So, this, that, that should be good enough. Okay, so start with these stars, the points that x and y can take together. And, and even in moderate size examples, you can do this, and along with your dot 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 visualizations, you can sort of take it to larger values. Then, on top of this, okay, you have to now start doing the contours. Okay, so you have to be careful. I have not drawn it to scale, so it will look a little ugly, but you know, sort of visualize it with me. Uh, what is the contour of x plus y equals 2? Right? So, that is the first contour no? for, the, for the values of z. I need to do that and you will see here this is 1 comma 1, is not it? So, pay attention to that. This is 1 comma 1. So, 1 plus 1 is 2 and then 2 here, 3 here. So, this will be the contour. I am sort of drawing it. So, this is x plus y equals 2. Do you agree? Think that through very carefully. This needs a little bit of thought. Uh, you have to see 1 plus 1 is 2 and then draw x plus y equal to 2. It will go through 2. And then you notice here that for these two stars here, x plus y is 3. Okay? And then you have the next value here, x plus y is equal to 3. 
and uh, you notice that this line okay <laughs> let's just say that's the line and that's x plus y is equal to 3 I, I didn't draw it properly to scale otherwise it would have come nicely as a line here okay so excuse me for that maybe i should maybe i should do that a little bit differently so that i get a reasonable looking line there you go that's a line i think that's a more believable line okay Okay, I think I should save this. Okay, so that's some more. Oh my God, my mind went off. That's a more believable line in some sense. Okay, so that's x plus y is equal to 3. Then you have what? Then you have these three points which give you, you know, 1, 3, 2, 2, 3, 1, and that will all fall on x plus y equal to 4. Okay. So this, I will agree, is a little bit tricky. You have, you, have to, you have to think this through a little bit. So basically, you have to find out all the stars, all the points that X and Y take together that fall on a particular contour, one after the other. You should go through, so for each value of Z, you should go through the possible contours and simply find out all the points that lie on that contour. So this is exactly what you're doing when you do this, isn't it? this guy set of all x y such that g of x y is equal to z you have to do it on this plot okay so this needs a little bit of visualization okay so just think of all these stars that are lined up in a grid and then look at the value of x plus y that each of them take so you will notice this pattern there will be this 2 value 2 that comes here with this point okay z equals 2 so here you will have z equals 3 here also you have z equals 3 and then you have z equals 4, z equals 4, z equals 4, like that. Okay. So, and then those fall on the line x plus y equals 4, x plus y equals 3, x plus y equals 2. Okay. So, this kind of identification is, uh, is sort of like a table, except that you're going in an organized way with the contours of the function and you're sweeping this line, you know, increasing the c and seeing where all you get hits with the x, y. Okay. So, this kind of visualization is very important. And if you do that, you will find that, you know, uh, the number of points that result in z equals 2 is 1. The number of points that result in z equals 3 is 2. The number of points that result in z equals 4 is 3. Okay. So, you, you, can, you can write that down. Like, for instance, you know, you, you, you can even do it without the graph in your head. You can do this corresponds to 1, 1. If you look at z equals 3, this corresponds to 1, 2 and 2, 1. If you look at z equals 4, this corresponds to 1, 3, 2, 2 and 1, 3. I'm sorry, 3, 1. Okay. There are various ways to figure this out. Another way to figure this out is if you look at x plus y equal to 5, right, my value for x could be 1, 2 all the way to 4 and the corresponding value for y is going to be plus 4, plus 3, plus 1, right? So, there are 4 different possibilities which give me uh, x plus y equals 5, 1, 4, 2, 3, 3, 2 and 4, 1. Do you see that? So, essentially you have to solve the problem of what pairs x, y give me a particular value for g of x, y. In this case, it is the sum. You can either visualize it graphically with the line or you can just visualize it algebraically with the equation x plus y equal to 5 gives me how many different values of x, how many different values of y. Okay? But nevertheless, it is a slightly non-trivial problem. You have to count how many values of x, y give you one particular value of z. Okay? So, it is a slightly involved problem, but it can be done. Once you do it, the answer is very, very simple. right? So, because each value x, y has a probability of 1 by 36, isn't it? the PMF gives you 1 by 36, 1 by 36, etc. Right? So, once you find the number of points, it is simply 1 by 36, 1 by 36 added so many times and that gives you the answer directly and that is where you get this. Okay? So, you add over the contours for every particular value of y. So, the value of z equals 2 is just 1, 1. Value of z equals 3 is 1, 2 and 2, 1. Value of z equals 4 is 1, 3. 2 comma 2 and 3 comma 1 value z equals 5 I showed you for 6 and up to 7 you will get all possibilities notice what happens for 7 1 comma 6 
टू कमा फाइव थ्री कमा फोर फोर कमा थ्री फाइव कमा टू एंड सिक्स कमा वन ऑल दीज सिक्स पॉसिबिलिटीज आर दर सो यू गॉट सिक्स बाई थर्टी सिक्स Okay, so you add up each of these things: one by thirty-six plus one by thirty-six, one by thirty-six. Notice it's still one big table that I'm making in my head. I'm just arguing it out more carefully here, uh, so that I can write it out with a pattern. Okay, still there is a table. Okay, the table is always there. Is there? Notice what happens when you go to eight. Okay, eight is a little bit tricky. So normally you would say, okay, I'm seeing the pattern: one, two, three, four, five, six. And then I should go to seven, right? But it's not going to seven. It's going to five. Why? Because the maximum is only six, right? So notice what happens for eight. For eight, you have to start with two at least, two comma six. If 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 one of these values is one, no way the sum is going to be eight. Okay, one one plus seven is equal to eight, but seven cannot occur when you throw a die. So it has to be two comma six. So the number of possibilities has gone down by one, three comma five, four comma four, five comma three, six comma two. That gives you five out of thirty-six. Okay. So likewise, you'll see for nine, it's reduced once more, four by thirty-six. For ten, it has reduced one more. Eleven, it has reduced one more. Twelve, it has reduced one more. Finally, for twelve, it's only six comma six, and that gives you one by thirty-six. Okay. So notice how you cleverly make the table again in your head, identifying patterns either through the contours on uh, graphically or in your head with algebraically manipulating how many possibilities are there. Okay. And since it's all uniform, it's very easy to count it up, and you get the answer. Okay. Hopefully, this gave you a little bit more of illustration and feel for how sums are computed. Later, I will generalize this from instead of six to any number, and you'll see at that point it will become a little bit more uh, interesting. So, so this is uh, one illustration of how to deal with sum. Uh, we'll see the other functions in the next lecture.